All right. Thank you very much for uh, accepting to do this interview uh, for the ComTalk project with ECPS. Um, to begin with, could you please uh, introduce yourself, uh, your organization, and the sort of work that uh, Samos Volunteers does? Absolutely, and thank you for um, the opportunity to speak with you. Um, so my name is Tix, and I'm the Advocacy and Communications Coordinator here with Samos Volunteers. Um, we are a grassroots NGO that's based um, in Samos in Greece. It's one of the Aegean islands, um, and we provide a range of services to um, displace people who are living here in the camp. Um, we don't actually work inside the camp, but we um, offer safe spaces, community centre, um, education, mental health support, um, and a few other services like distribution and, uh, yeah. Great. Um, going straight into um, the game, the game Bury My Love is based on the Syrian refugee crisis in, in 2015, uh, where you play as the partner um, left behind in, in Syria uh, to take care of your family while um, your partner uh, heads out to find a way to Europe. Uh, the game utilizes a text messaging thread as its sort of main storytelling device between the, the two, uh, um, the, part, uh, the, the couple, uh, with branching paths. Uh, and the lead designer uh, had mentioned that this was to try to replicate the feelings of sort of anxiety and anticipation felt between people separated by thousands of kilometers with uh, only a phone to connect them. And uh, I guess the question is, uh, as an organization helping uh, people on the move, do you think this depiction of um, the experiences of people on the move is helpful uh, for awareness raising? And do you think that this sort of subject um, ought to be de depicted through the media of a, a medium of an interactive experience like a video game? Um, yes, yeah, so it's a very interesting um, topic. And I think that, uh, as you said, really emphasizing this sense of anxiety, uncertainty um, is really important because that is one of the defining experiences, um, I think, of, of yeah, seeking refuge, of being on the move. Um, obviously, just to um, emphasize here at the start, I don't have any experience of um, seeking refuge myself, and so I wouldn't want to talk also for people and, and really what the journey is like for them. Um, so that's something that I think is really important to say. Um, I think it's, it's tricky. I think one positive aspect of this um, medium is that you know, you're encouraging people to try to understand what that feeling is of waiting, of um, of not knowing where your loved one is, of, you know, these decisions that you have no idea what the outcome will be. Um, and I think that it's definitely commendable to try to, um, you know, to share that sense with the general public and, and people who might play the game. One thing that I, I think the key issue really here is, um, is that Video games, in essence, are um, quite instantaneous. Um, you know, even if the game takes a long time to play, a long time being, you know, an hour, two hours, um, I think it's almost impossible to try to um, to simulate the the feeling of um, kind of interminable waiting. And I think that is really the core, one of the core issues with the um, the asylum system here in Greece, but actually just worldwide, really. Um, I think in the past, um, seeking refuge was something you know, back in the 1950s or something, or um, the way that it was, the, the kind of international law surrounding seeking refuge was originally designed is that you seek refuge, you're instantly granted um, some form of protection. And then at some point you hope to either go back to your country or be integrated into your host society. Um, as it stands now, thousands, millions of people actually are encamped and are left waiting sometimes for 20 years and for 30 years. Um, and so I think that it's almost impossible for a video game to simulate this. Um, and I think that's really the core issue. Um, yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, yeah. The, there's a period where you do go into a camp, and the the, the topic uh, in the video game, and then the topic of just the sort of endless wait does is brought up. Mm. Um, it's you go into a camp in in Jordan, and uh, yeah, that the 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 topic is brought up. It, of course, yeah, as you said in the game, it's sort of instantaneous. Um, but um, yeah, at least there is some. Um, even back then, and because the game did come out in 2015, there was still this idea to, to show that waiting is a, a big part of the, of the experience of people on the move. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, when it comes to sort of addressing these topics with sort of the, the, the sort of like uh, severity uh, of, a, of the refugee crisis, um, there are sort of criticisms that have emerged on the sort of commercialization of these events, um, irrespective of the sort of intent of the developers. Um, what are your thoughts on, on sort of this issue, not just with video games, but perhaps in, in the sort of media sphere uh, in general when it comes to uh, uh, depicting these topics? 
yeah, I guess that's um, one thing I would say as well is is um, where it is if there is any profit from this kind of um, game, kind of where is it going? And I think that um, generally to try and commodify journeys to seek refuge, which are you know definitional of people's lives, um, I think is dangerous. Um, and I, you know, it's it's a very difficult thing because I think that sits within the wider picture of you know there's um, thousands of people also making their living um, from working in this setting, and I think that's a very uh, tricky uh, topic within humanitarianism in general actually is that um, you know there are people making very large salaries working with displaced people and, and to an extent you think well that's also in a way a quantification of their experiences and, and of the, um, the horrendous things they have to deal with so um, I would say that it's very much an issue regarding the video games but I think it's important to situate that within the wider picture and discussions of you know, how we can make sure um, that people aren't profiting, you know, obviously it's important that uh, people working with people on the move can also make a living and, and can keep doing what they're doing, but um, not to be making these kind of huge profits. And then it makes it clear that, you know, this is not something that um, we should ever uh, kind of benefit from um, because it's so detrimental to people's lives. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you sort of mentioned, yeah, that there's sort of the, the difficulty to Sort of grasp both um, yeah, the willingness of people to help, but also the fact that yeah, it is it is a uh, 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 yeah a job for for some people. Um, do you think um, sort of bringing more towards the idea between um, whether or not do you think that there is a disconnect between um, sort of advocacy workers or organizations, NGOs like like Samus Volunteers uh, who work with people on the move, um, and do you think there's a disconnect between them and sort of the wider wider sort of media discourse or discussion in Europe around uh, uh, refugees? Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think the um, issue being that when you are working directly with people on the move and you're hearing their experiences um, every day, you obviously have a different um, perspective to all of the media um, across Europe and um, particularly, I'm, I'm from the UK and particularly in the UK right now, there's um, really horrendous discourse um, surrounding um, refugees and people on the move. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite depressing when you have these, you know, interactions um, here in Samos or places like Calais um, with real people and you, you really start to understand um, the picture, the human picture. And it sounds kind of cliche, but that is how it is. And yet, you know, all of the, well, not all of the um, news, but a large majority of it does demonise um, just the fact of people being on the move at all. Um, and I think that you know, potentially something like this, a video game, for example, would then enable people to um, to connect with that more human um, element, something that that I don't know if it would really help to to burst the echo chamber, is that I can't imagine, you know, you run your Daily Mail reader or the person that does go um, and, and believe these sorts of uh, media stories about refugees. I don't know if they would then willingly even play or interact with um, a video game, which is, is trying to humanize um, people's journeys. Yeah, I guess based off the sort of target group that uh, video games touch, I guess the best hope is to reach sort of younger uh, audiences, or younger generations that don't necessarily, that might sort of be on the uh, receiving end of some of these discourses of negative discourses, uh, but also have the sort of technical knowledge or rather the interest to go reach out to these video games um, and try them out. And I think, yeah, it, as you said, it's difficult to reach the sort of daily mail voter or reader rather. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, hopefully, like uh, so, this emphasis on youth and on interactivity, uh, uh, there might be sort of options there um, for yeah. this space. Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely more potential when targeting younger people because I think they tend to be less closed off anyway. Um, mm. And for example, things like uh, quite a lot of people have interacted with um, people on the move themselves through things like TikTok. I think um, I'm not a TikTok user myself, but I I think um, that that is happening quite a lot. So I think you know it's it's essentially interesting to explore I just um you know I, I do think there are fundamental problems with the medium of a video game with its ability to reflect the actual experience whether or not that means that you know it's something that shouldn't exist I don't think it's the same thing and um, I just think it's really important to to kind of um to be critical and not, yeah mm. yeah definitely uh it's something that you know you should be sure that uh, there's a lot of sort of moral and ethical implications that exist uh that you have to keep uh, keep track of. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and and then this sort of uh, sort of leads us to sort of the, uh, a bit of a closing closing question on um, yeah, 
I mean, it's sort of the, the distillation of uh, all our points is whether or not video games or should or can video games play a role in sort of addressing some of these um, uh, sort of events, uh, societal events, uh, whether or not there is a, a space for them. Because um, I'd like to sort of ask for your perspective on how Samuels Volunteers sort of reaches out to uh, for advocacy and and like how this can sort of maybe meld together or combine together um, because the common project is to sort of bring different voices together so um, and sort of getting the perspective of uh, different actors in the field um, uh, and also the ones that develop video games but also those that study um, the way that video games are used in a, from a more scholarly perspective so we'd just like to get your perspective on that. Yeah of course um, so as I said kind of um, I think it, regardless of my opinion I think that um, it's it would be interesting to talk with people on the move themselves really about this and I think that that is something that we try to do as summer volunteers in terms of our advocacy in terms of our outreach and communications we try to um, to talk with community members about how they want to be represented about how you know what they want to put out so I think actually the, the crucial thing really would be to talk to um, someone who has got lived experience of of um, seeking refuge or being on the move and and just to try to understand for them you know do you think it's a good idea do you feel like this would actually trivialize your experiences um and that you you know would you be offended by the idea of of your um journeys being put into a game format you know um so i think that would be actually the the, the core <laughs> way to respond um in terms yeah as i said you know we really try to do things that are community-led so um we uh for example, we might release um, on our Instagram playlists um, of songs of people that are here um, that they like. And just to really focus on this uh, really human element. And I think that's in that way, you know, I think the video game does have potential. Um, I would just be super interested to find out how it's possible to um to to emulate this this awareness of time. And I think because that is one of the defining issues of um of journeys today really is is that people are left in limbo for so long um and i think for example uh, recent films like the swimmers i'm not sure if um yeah if you've seen it but on netflix and um it's amazing you know it's just, um, the story of sarah mardini and yusra mardini who um, were syrian refugees who fled um from syria in 2015 came to lesbos um you know did the probably similar journey to um the the one in the video game um and I think it's wonderful. It, it's it had a huge reach, and I think that's an amazing thing. However, and when you watch it as someone who does have experience or is still, you know, working in in this area, um, I think it it's quite striking how they don't really talk about the the waiting, and that is also because, to be fair, it has changed, you know. And so, and that's a really important thing um, to note in general is that you know, in 2015, people were coming to um, the Aegean Islands. They were staying for two days. They were rushed uh, through the, the kind of system onto, or well, they weren't even actually processed in Greece, um, and they were, you know, put straight onto ferries to the mainland. And then they, there was a humanitarian corridor which was open, so um, people could move through to places like Germany. Um, and so, you know, it's not in a way, it's not actually inaccurate of those particular journeys, because um, some of them were quite quick, and people were arriving in Germany, you know, only thirty days or something after they'd arrived in Greece. Um, so now people are left in protracted situations since the EU Turkey deal, for example, which has um, kind of kept people in these islands. Um, and there are people that, yeah, that have been stuck here for two years. And so I think that's also very interesting is that each journey to seek refuge is varied individual and based on the context. And uh, I think it's just important, for example, in a video game like that, that you'd have links to information about what the situation is like now, um, or, or, you know, a little screen after you finish the game of like you know this is how it was and this is this is a horrendous experience and it's nothing um to, to celebrate either but to say that it has deteriorated further um i think it's just really important to politicize it actually and to and to keep people aware of um what the, the ongoing situation is mm. sorry that was a very long answer no that was perfect yeah thank you 